StarCraft fans! This is Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another Legacy of the Void Mono Battle! This will be a game between Team Red and Team Blue on Chimeran Refuge. This was a single draft sent to me at falconpaladin at gmail.com with the subject of Mono Battle. I figured it's been a long time since I've cast one of these. Well, maybe two weeks or so, which is a long time to me. And let's get right on into it. In the top side of Chimera and Refuge, we have the red team starring the red Terran player Railgun. Not Railgun with an A. It's Railgun. His teammate, the red Zerg player, Mr. Neon. His teammate, the red Protoss player, Arbiter. And finally, a red Terran player, Dreddazen. And in the bottom side of the map, we have the blue team represented by the blue Protoss player, Robespierre. A blue Terran player, Cry d'Amour. Another blue Terran player, Fiat. Did I call him a red Terran player? Blue Terran player, Cry d'Amour. Blue Terran player, Fiat. And blue Zerg player, a Jekyll. All right, so a very strong French presence in the naming of these players in the bottom half of the map. I'm not sure if they're a team or not. Really hard to tell. No, don't pull all your SCVs. Mm, Railgun is pulling all of his SCVs off the line to get rid of a single, single probe. That's crazy talk, dude. You can't do that stuff. Somebody's pinging like crazy over on this left side. So I did pay attention to the single draft results. And it looks like uh, what we've got coming out here for Team Red is Thor, Raven, Ling, Disruptor. And Team Blue is uh, Hydra, Thor, Void Ray, Cyclone. So that's your difference. Oh, man. Railgun. You were pulling all of your SCVs off the line to deal with a single pylon, dude. I don't think you're even necessarily being cannon rushed. Are you being cannon rushed? This is the only Protoss player. He is blue. He doesn't even have a forge. Oh, what a great play, though. What a great play by a blue Protoss player. So, let's see. If we look at these compositions here, a lot of good anti-air and pretty good anti-ground stuff here from uh, Team Blue. Right, with the Hydras, the Thors, the Void Rays, and the Cyclones. Team Red struggles a little bit with the Zerglings. And the Thors, again, decent air. Disruptor, not great against air. And Ravens for auto turrets, but not the greatest. So at least they all have something that's good against air. The trouble comes when nobody has anything that can shoot up. And then you're building missile turrets, you're building spore crawlers, and you're trying to trying to deal with anti-air that way. And it's just very difficult. Very difficult indeed. Lings are already here for Mr. Neon, though. Ling player for Team Red going after Jekyll's expansion. I don't think Jackal can save this. He doesn't have anything... That can save it at all. There are a good six lings here with two more coming in and two more coming in. Ten lings. Is he getting speed? Oh, he finished. Jackal let that hatchery finish. Dude, why? I guess maybe it delays the lings coming up inside the main base, but that's a pretty good wall. It's a pretty good... No, no, no. Go get it. Where... There we go. Getting the hatch and getting out of there before the... No. He didn't... <laughs> there we go. Now he finished it, and his lings are running far, far away. I don't... Maybe trying to take out this base as well. Robespierre has a base that is looking very undefended as well here. So trying to take down the pylons in case Photon Overcharge is going to be a thing. Is that a Drop Lord? Oh, he's making a Drop Lord too. Mr. Neon, you're my hero. I love this early ling stuff. As a Zerg player, it just makes me feel, feel nice to see lings being used actively. As they're pretty squishy, there is not a whole lot of time where they're amazing. But in the situations where they are good, they are a very, very good... Forge, going to get knocked down here from Robespierre and going to lose this Nexus as well. Good target firing with priorities there from Mr. Neon. Wonderful. People back home for Team Red are complaining about controlling stuff. No, no, no. No, no, no. Fin you could get it. Mm, Mothership Core can't even shoot. Look. Can't shoot. Doesn't have attack. Has Chrono Boost and that is it. Go finish the Nexus. Okay, there are two Lings. Finishing the Nexus. Lings getting, oh, dropped inside. There's the Photon Overcharge though. Inside the main mineral line of Robespierre. Trying to take down this Nexus. No, go after probes. There we go. Going after probes. Are there enough links to make a difference here, though? I don't know if there actually are. And look at these links zapping away. Oh, oh, man. Probes zapping away. All the links get murdered in that situation. So two links trying to finish Robespierre's expansion. And I don't know what stop. I guess there's a Void Ray. The Void Ray could probably stop this. Ah, I really wish Robespierre had just stayed here and finished off this natural base of Robespierre, but instead got super distracted. Tried to go inside the main. It did little to no damage in there. Right? Maybe killed a couple probes, but lost everything else. So good luck with that. Got a whole bunch more links rolling on down here, though. I don't know. Even with a Void Ray? Oh, good lift of that Supply Depot. And then lower of the Supply Depot. Cry more. Cry more. I actually missed 
on that one there. So Ling Player, is he macroing up? I need to know what he's doing here behind this because this is very nice and all, but if this is all he has, he's in trouble. He actually is getting plus one melee attack. He has a ton, a ton of Lings. Uh, no, sorry, a ton of Overlords on the way and a ton of money in the bank here as well. So Team Blue has taken some hits, has taken some hits, lost that expansion for the Zerg player. A one basing Zerg is just not a great feeling. Not the greatest feeling of all time. Getting that Hydralisk Den, getting Muscular Augments, getting plus one, plus one. First Hydralisks as well. The Lings are back. Can they get that? Oh, no, they're turning their attention to a Cyclone. They pick a Cyclone off, which, okay, that seems fairly nice. Free uh, SCV here as well. Two Disruptor drop here onto Jackal's base. Oh, double Disruptor. Getting some nice kills there on Jackal's Mineral Line. Not as Probably not as good as it could have been, but regardless, still pretty fantastic and really good at putting some fear of your enemy into your enemy. Fear of their enemy into your enemy? I don't know. Articles are hard. They are hard sometimes. All right, Overlord here for Mr. Neon hanging out in the middle of the map. Just wants to see what is going on, what is coming up the left side, what is coming up the right side. Right now, not much. It's just kind of Team Red being assertive, but oh, there is a Void Ray attack coming up this left side from Robespierre. And so many lings. They really want to get this Nexus, and they're going to get it. Robespierre going to lose it. There's about 30 lings here. And then they move on to the next expansion. Get over here. That's going to be a Planetary Fortress in 10 seconds. Oh, whatever. This one's not. <clears throat> this one is not. The Void Rays are forced to come back home to deal with this. Yep, there we go. Thor's Void Rays, Planetary Fortresses. Like I said, eventually the effectiveness of these lings will be held in question. Fia's expansion. In trouble here at the same time. Hydra is trying to deal with them, but picking off so many SCVs. Good control there. All the Lings do get killed by a combination Thor Void Ring Hydra army from Team South. Auto turrets coming down here from Dread Dazen. We'll call him Dread for Judge Dread. Oh, and they force a cancel on the Nexus. Three of them. Wow, only three auto turrets. Enough to do that. So Rupus Pierre is kind of stuck on one base right now. Does he have any expansions at all? I don't believe that he does. I really don't. Team Red, meanwhile, is super happy with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 total bases among them all. Auto turret trying to kill a planetary fortress. Don't see that every day. Actually trying to pick off some mules there. We're doing some better target firing. And the Cyclones get rid of those and try to use their lock-on ability on the Raven. Run, Raven! No, Thor is getting rid of those. that super duper easily. Disruptor drop. Oh, getting some nice kills there. Inside Robespierre's main. Robespierre is down to, what, 14 workers? 14 workers is not good. It's not a good number at all. Uh, does manage, again, Fia has that expansion. Replanting his expansion is Robespierre. His nexus will not be denied. Corvid Reactor on the way for our Raven player, as well as recalibrated explosives. And Terran ship weapons level 2. Wait. The Ravens don't benefit from ship weapons level 2, do they? Do auto turrets benefit from ship weapons upgrades? I don't... I don't know. Fia's trying to take this gold base in the middle here. There are some Thors defending it against Lings that are trying to kill it. The Void Ray Cat for Robespierre looking pretty good, but a couple missile turrets enough to chase him away from this expansion by Railgun on this left side. Lings disruptors against these Hydras. Oh, man, the massacre. Oh, <laughs> lot of dead Hydras there, but still enough Thors... To chase away these disruptors, get out of there, disruptor player. Run for your life. Marauders waltzing in here for Railgun. Wait, wait, wait. Is there a Marauder player? Did I miss that somewhere in my list? I might have missed that somewhere in my list. Railgun is has a whole bunch of Marauders. He's walking around just murdering bases and stuff with. He's running from the Void Rays, because obviously the Void Rays are a huge problem for him. But uh, you could take down this over the commander, or at least force it to lift. Lift, Fia, lift. Lift over, stimming a little bit. Can they save the orbital command? Good stutter step. No, gets the orbital command. Fia loses it. And all of the marauders are dead. Lings running into Rubbispear's <laughs> main base. Lings in here in the main base of Kryidamore as well. Just everywhere, causing so much chaos for Team Blue. And here inside the main mineral line of Kryidamore as well. SCV is just getting murdered so quickly. These Lings have plus one, plus one. But Void Rays from above take care of that problem pretty darn easily, as it turns out. So, Team Blue has taken a lot of shots here, man. Their worker count is 4, 47, 21, 37, and Team Red's at 34, 46, 56, and 40. So, except for that 4 worker person, who I think is Rose Pierre, I think everybody else is okay. 
More Disruptor shots coming down. Disruptor against Thor is not something you see every single day of the week, but that's how Mono Battle works. You get weird compositions, weird battles against stuff you don't ever expect to see battle. That's how this thing generally seems to happen. Infestation pit on the way for Mr. Neon and his Ling. It's just going to be for upgrades. Is all it is. Marauder Ling. Just uh, causing some problems. Did I think Thor for Railgun when it's actually Marauder? That must be. I must have missed, seen that or got misreported. Or something. Auto turrets being thrown down on Jackal's attempt at a base on the right side. And Disruptor's coming in to protect it as well. Auto turrets can't quite take down the hatch. Ling's getting rid of a replacement base by Crytamore here on the right side. Uh, the bottom side. Ooh, Disruptor's trying to kill those Thors, but they're a little bit too agile for you, as it turns out. Ling's getting surrounds on Cyclones. That's what you want, man. Ling's on Cyclones is the best way to do it. Most cost-efficient way to do it anyway. You're not going to win-win-win, but you will do a lot better than other options. Using Purification Nova to finish off that hatch of Jackals on the right side. Interesting play. More Auditors being thrown down at the Jackals. A natural base killing so many drones. Jackal is down. Jackal really down to five Harvesters right now? Is that Jackal? No, that's Robus Pierre. Why does it keep... I don't know, he's at 33, which is not super healthy, but regardless, a Void Ray player, again, going to be pretty dangerous in these team games, as it takes pretty specific compositions to get rid of a Void Rays. Jackal's complaining about how unfair this is. Auto Turret's getting thrown down against these Void Rays. Void Rays trying to get rid of the Ravens anyway. Ah, oh, Jackal's out! Jackal's out at 15 minutes into this game. Why is he so mad? He's okay. He's got two bases. Alright, Jackal's gone, so somebody's going to have to control these Hydras. Thor's for Team Blue. Void Rays for Team Blue. Moving on in here. Dread Dazzin has to retreat from his newly created expansion. Here, uh, basically his natural, right? Yeah, that's his natural base. He has to lift off and run from it. Disruptors. So many Purification Novas. Oh, man. Purification Novas chasing down those Cyclones. Picking another one off there. This player's having a fun time. Arbiter really enjoys his time. Purification Novas taking down the Planetary Fortress. <laughs> More purification. No one's taking down it. Oh, almost getting that command center. Almost getting it. Links will probably finish it off, although it did. No purification. No one's. Wait, do they not hit friendly units? No, oh, I guess not. Why am I? I don't know. I'm having some weird thoughts here. Trying to get up this ramp. There are three cyclones holding it. Can't they hold it against the marauders and against the uh, the disruptors? I do not know. Void rays coming in. To the top side of the map, Dread Dazzin does have auto turrets he's throwing down, trying desperately to kill these voiders with auto turrets, but I'm not sure it's actually going to work out super duper well. Robus Pierre, our void ray player, is actually toast at this point. I think he has so many marauders, so many disruptors here, killing everything that he has. His main base is gone. His stargates are under attack here as well. Two void rays trying to save it, but it's just not going to work. Meanwhile, he's having a good time over at Dread Dazzin's main base, taking out barracks, getting rid of supply depots. Nobody is really challenging. These Void Rays at all, and Dread Dazzin is out, so both teams have left, lost a player at this point in time, which makes things pretty darn interesting. Cyclones versus <laughs> Disruptors? <laughs> Fia has left the game as well, and actually, this Team Blue's doing okay. Oh, Crytomore is out as well. What is going on? Why is Team Blue leaving so much? You guys, you got this thing. You got this thing. Uh, some Marauders here for Railgun, trying to kill Crytomore's base, but no, Crytomore's still alive. Still alive. Lings from Mr. Neon running all the way home. This Void Ray player, I just don't know what's going to stop him. This seems very familiar. Very similar to the last Mono Battle that I cast. Void Rays are just good. If you can get Void Ray, uh, you should probably maybe get Void Ray. You're rarely just left out in the cold, not being effective against anything. Ling's cleaning up what's left of Fia's base, just trying to make sure that any additional income does not result in the other team winning at this point. Crytomore's bases are being destroyed as well. I think it's only... Who's left here for Team Blue? Is it only Robespierre? It might be only our Void Ray player. Ooh, free Disruptors. Get those. Run, Disruptors! <laughs> nope. Disruptors getting murdered. Mr. Neon has no anti-air in his main base except for a Queen. I don't know if that's going to be enough, Mr. Neon. All right, so the Queen gets absolutely burned down. Plus, one attack is done on these Void Rays. And try to decide where else he wants to go is Robus Pierre, but Ling's taking care of stuff. Again, what's left down of Team Blue's things? Ling's are very good. They're kind of scavengers, right? They murder whatever, whatever's left over. After the big hunts, a lot of missile turrets from Railgun, though. A lot of them here. Don't, I don't know if you want to attack into this, dude. He's attacking into more and more and more and more. Losing his voider is, dude, the control could be better. 
The control could be better, Robespierre. Stay in, stay in a place where there aren't as many as many turrets. And I think you're going to be A-OK. -okay. Yeah, this is a good place to hold position. You could take down marauders that are leaving. You take down barracks that are producing. Expanding down in the south is Arbiter, which is a very exciting stuff. Ling trying to get rid of Robespierre's final Stargate. They do have... They get it, but they do have plus two, plus two. It makes them just that much better. Trying to get rid of pylons at the same time. And I just, I think, I think that's it. Robespierre has, he's got some fours he's controlling over here. Void Rays still kind of locking down Railgun's base just a little bit. Thors from Fia getting rid of Dread Dazen's expansion. I don't know what's left for Dread Dazen. I really don't. Oh, we got some free disruptors here, which is bad news. Purification Nova. No, getting rid of all of them, though. Did not see that coming from the top. Arbiter comes in with his disruptors and finishes those off. Zergon player, Mr. Neon, effective in the early game, effective in the late game. In these base race type situations, but not, you know, not great otherwise. I think this is going to be it for Team Blue. Team Blue in a lot. In a lot, a lot, a lot of trouble here. Arbiter says, should have been, should have built Raven. Should have built Raven? Should have chosen Raven? Not sure what he's trying to say here. Either way, Railgun marching in with his million marauders into Jackal's main base. Queen has plus two, plus two for Jackal. I guess he was the Hydralisk player. Makes a lot of sense. Robus Pierre's Void Rays are still here, killing a Raven, but losing a Void Ray in the process. And two auto turrets are good, man. Auto turrets are good. I'm pretty sure they don't benefit from air upgrades. Robus Pierre is out, and that's it. Mr. Neon, Dread Dazen, Arbiter, and Railgun are victorious. Whew. These mono battles are always nuts. There's always action the whole time. That Ling player, Mr. Neon, early on, got Disruptor pushes, got Thor pushes, got the Void Ray player just wreaking havoc here in the north. I mean, Team North didn't have a whole lot at the end of the game. 20 Zerglings for Mr. Neon. Dread Dazen had nothing. Arbiter had three Disruptors, and there are 21 Marauders for a Railgun. So definitely a very narrow victory for Team Red, but they did it. They pulled it out, and that's going to be it from me. So this has been Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another daily Legacy of the Void upload. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit the subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.